Hey SolidWorks users, welcome back to our four-part series where we are celebrating the fall season by modeling a pumpkin pie spice jar. So grab a cup of hot apple cider, press mute on the football game, and let's get started with part two of our series. We have the initial shape of our jar modeled that we need to hollow out, but before doing that, let's add a smooth framed area for the jar's label. I want an oval-shaped label whose face is curved to hug the outside of the jar. I can do this with a simple straight extrusion that I then cut back using a revolved cut but I'll show you a different option here. Let's unhide our profile sketch that's on the front plane and start a new sketch on the front plane. Use the Offset Entities tool to offset this sketch five thousandths of an inch to the outside of the sketch. I'm going to use this outer curved edge to create a revolved surface, so let's convert these other three lines to construction lines. Exit the sketch and navigate to the Surfaces tab in the Command Manager. Here you'll find the Revolve Surface command. Enter the Revolved Surface Property Manager and select our sketched center line to revolve the surface around. We just need our label area in the front of the jar, so let's do a 180 degree revolve. Now let's sketch an ellipse on the front plane. I'll snap the center line to the part's origin and dimension the major and minor axes. And to fully constrain this sketch, I'll add a vertical relation between this bottom point and the center point. Exit the sketch, unhide the jar body, and enter the extruded boss tool. Under the From dropdown, you'll see the option for Surface, Face, Plane. Select that option, and then select the revolved surface we created. Under Direction 1, you can click on this box with the little arrows to toggle the extrusion direction and we'll just set a dimension of half an inch to make sure this extrusion goes all the way into the jar body. So there we have our label area with a compound curved outer face. Now let's just blend that in with a few fillets. I'll use an eighth inch radius around the inside edge and a 0.2 inch radius around the outer edge. Now we're ready to hollow the jar out using the shell tool, which you'll find in the command manager. Here you'll set your shell thickness dimension, in this case we'll use 1 16th of an inch, and then select the face you'd like to remove. The default is to shell inward, which we want in this case, but you have the option to shell outward as well. And we can click the option to show a preview before committing to this dimension. That looks good there, so I'll click the green check mark to complete the shell. Now let's create a shallow recess for our label to give it sort of a frame. Just as we used the From Surface option in the Extruded Boss tool, we can do the same with an Extruded Cut tool. I'll unhide my ellipse sketch to reference and create a new sketch on the front plane. Use the Convert Entities tool to copy this ellipse over to the current sketch and convert it to a construction line. Now use the Offset Entities tool to offset this ellipse 1 8 of an inch to the inside. Exit the sketch and enter the Extruded Cut tool and under the From section, select Surface Face Plane again. This time we can select the outer face of our label area. Keep in mind, in order to use this option, your sketch must lie fully inside of a single surface or face. Now let's cut this 1 32nd of an inch deep, and notice that the bottom of our cut also matches the shape of our reference surface. Now let's just add a small fillet to blend this frame in a bit. Okay, we're about ready to add the thread to the neck. First, let's add a collar around the base of the neck, which will act as a stop when the lid is screwed on. We'll do this with a simple revolve. So let's sketch on the right plane and use the corner rectangle tool to draw a small square. I'll set an equal relation between one of the horizontal lines and one of the vertical lines, then dimension the square's size and position. And don't forget to sketch the center line to revolve around. Exit the sketch and enter the Revolved Boss tool from the Command Manager. This is a simple 360 degree revolve, so this looks good. Now let's add the thread. In older versions of SolidWorks, this would require first creating a helical curve and then sweeping a thread profile along that curve. But the 2016 and newer versions now have a thread tool. You can find the tool under Insert Features Thread. Once in the Thread Property Manager, let's first set the thread's location by selecting a circular edge, in this case the top outer edge of our jar's neck. 
and I'll set an offset distance of 1 16th of an inch, which will separate the top of our thread from the selected edge. Then let's set our end condition. Here you can choose to create a blind thread where you set a dimension for the length of the thread. You can choose to set the number of revolutions, or you can choose up to selection, which allows you to choose a vertex, edge, plane, or planar surface in which to terminate the thread. In this case, we'll set the number of revolutions to 1.25. And right now the preview is showing a cut thread, so let's come down here and change this to extrude thread, and select mirror profile to extrude this to the outside of the neck. Finally, under specification, you can choose from a list of standard inch and metric taps and dies, and even industry standard bottle profiles. In this case, I'm going to customize the thread based on a 2.25 inch by 12 thread. I'm going to override the pitch value to spread the thread out a bit more. That looks good for now, so let's hit the green check mark to create the thread. Now we also have a little bit of control over the thread's profile. If you hit the arrow next to the thread feature in the history tree, you'll reveal a thread profile sketch. Double click that and you can edit some of the dimensions. Here I'll set the thickness of the tip of the profile to 30 thousandths of an inch and the height of the profile to 0 0.08 inches. Keep in mind you can't change the angle of the profile here, so if you'd like to customize that, you'll need to create the thread using the aforementioned helical curve and sweep method. So after altering those dimensions, navigate to the top of the window and click on this little traffic light to rebuild, and you'll see your changes take effect. There we go, that looks pretty good, I'm happy with that. Now notice how the thread starts and terminates with a flat face. I'd much rather the start and finish taper up to the thread. There are a number of ways to model this in, but I'll run through a pretty simple option. Let's navigate to the sketch tab in the command manager and in the drop down under sketch, enter the 3D sketch environment. And under Spline, select the Spline on Surface tool. Here we're going to draw a two-point spline that lies on the outer surface of the neck. Then set the spline points coincident to these points where the thread meets the outer surface of the neck. And we'll set this spline tangent to the helical edges of the thread. Then just dimension the length of the spline's handles. In this case, I'll set them to 3 quarters of an inch. To wrap up this sketch, just draw a straight line to enclose the sketch. We can now use this as one of our profiles for a boundary operation. For the second profile, we can simply sketch on the flat face where the thread starts, and use convert entities to copy the edges of this face over to the sketch. Now exit this sketch and enter the Boundary Boss tool from the Command Manager. And once in the Property Manager, first select the profile sketch we just created, then select the Spline Profile Sketch. You should see a preview of the boundary at this point which looks a bit angular. So in the Direction 1 box, reselect our first profile sketch and we'll set a Tangency to Face constraint from this dropdown, which will make this boundary start tangent to the selected faces that interact with the profile sketch. If the tool defaults to the wrong selected faces, just select the Next Face button to toggle through the other face options. There we go, we have a nicely tapered and blended start to our thread. So I'll just repeat that operation where the thread terminates, and I'll catch you on the other side. So there we have our completed thread. Let's just blend the thread and the collar in a bit with a 15 thousandths of an inch fillet all around. Okay, we are halfway done with our pumpkin pie spice jar. Stay tuned for part three of the series where we'll begin modeling the cap for our jar.